Hello, everybody! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Welcome to episode number four of Cooking for College Students. Today, we are tackling fried rice. Now, this video is going to be super quick, so I want to run through some of the ground rules while making fried rice. Number one, and just most important, have everything prepped and ready to go before you start cooking. As you can see, I've got everything portioned out, prepped, and within reach of where I'm going to be cooking. This is super important because fried rice is a very time-sensitive dish that we're going to be making today. That being said, I'm also drinking a Sauvignon Blanc from Red New Cellars, which is from my hometown, Ithaca. And that's going to pair perfectly with the fried rice. And also, I'd like to mention that we ditched the solo cups. Um, as much as they do represent college and the college culture, they're bad for the environment and we care about the turtles. So we are now drinking out of a 100% recycled glass wine thing, I guess. I don't know. But there we have it. Cheers to that, cheers to the turtles. Let's dive right into it. Okay, first step, get your pan super, super hot. We've got it on high heat. We want it to be just piping hot. I can barely hold my hand over it because it hurts. Then we're gonna throw in some oil, just a tablespoon of sesame oil. This is really important. You need sesame oil. Don't use anything else. When we're making fried rice, we use sesame oil. So we're gonna dump that right in there. And you can see already it starts to pop. And we're ready to go. In goes three eggs with a teaspoon of water. And now we're moving it. You can see it starts to bubble up immediately. It browns a little bit. And this is gonna take about 30 seconds. Don't let this scare you. A lot of people, myself included, get kind of freaked out when you're working with really hot things and you're working with the oil and it has to be done super quick. I promise it's not gonna hurt you. And just like that, the eggs are done. And we're gonna move it over to this plate over here. And you'll see they're a little brown, that's okay. That's perfectly okay. Clean this off a little bit, dump it in. Non-stick pans are really good for this because it keeps it clean. And then we're gonna get that pan going hot again. Now this high, this stove runs really, really hot. So I'm gonna turn mine down to about nine, eight and a half or so. If your stove is not like that, just keep it high heat. That'll be fine. So we're going to let that get hot again, and it pretty much comes right back to temperature. Then we're going to add another two tablespoons of more sesame oil. Get that in there. You can see it doesn't crackle right away because it's not as hot. Coat the pan a little bit, and in are two carrots and the uh, whites of two green onions. You're going to want to separate your green onion whites and then we've got the other parts over there and we'll put those in later. So again, coat your pan and it's okay to bring it off the heat like this because that kind of moderates the temperature a little bit and makes it a little safer when you throw your stuff in. Go like that. We got a little flame going. So the best way to think about this is like hibachi. You see, when they do hibachi, if you've ever been, they constantly keep it moving. We're gonna have to turn our fan on because we actually are on fire over here. <laughs> but fuck it, it's college. We love a little hazard. And you're just gonna keep these moving here for about a minute and a half to two minutes. And this is super important that you keep them moving because if you blink, if you stop moving them around, they're gonna burn. When I was practicing making this, I burned the shit out of my carrots and it completely ruined it. So we got these going. And it's really important also that you dice your carrots super, super tiny. You can see these pieces are, are really shredded and that helps them cook fast. And that's why we're able to do it so quick. So now that we've had those in there, we're gonna pick our pan up, get it off the heat. Our fire's gone out, thankfully. And we're gonna add in, we've got a clove of garlic. This is equivalent to about a tablespoon. Um, it depends on the size of your cloves too, like you can use anywhere between one and three. If you've got a really big clove, I'd use one. If you've got tiny ones, use three. And we've also got a tablespoon of ginger, which I've minced up. And we're going to throw both of those in there. Put it back on the heat and keep it moving. Anytime you've got this pan on the burner, make sure you are moving 
the food around. And now we're gonna cook this for another minute or so until you start to really smell the garlic and ginger. Get those moving around. Big shout out to our band this evening, Haim, who Kenny specially selected. Um, he loves them and he wanted to hear them this evening. I love him. <laughs> I love him. All right, so now that those have been in there, we can start to really smell, and like I said, this is gonna go quick. We're gonna throw in two cups of cooked rice, three quarters of a cup of peas, our cooked egg from earlier, the rest of our two green onions, which we cut up very finely, and about three tablespoons of soy sauce. Throw that in there and get her moving around. Reuse this, get that out of here. And there you have it, folks. Fried rice. Super easy, and might I add, super cheap. I bought enough ingredients for this to make fried rice about four or five times, and I spent less than $15, so it's great if you're in college, and it's really easy, other than the time sensitive, which I can't stress enough. Make sure you have everything prepped. Anyway, there's our finished product, there's our wine, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, fried rice. Super simple, super easy, super cheap. Now, before we end this video, I want to take a moment to say thank you um, to all of you. I've never done anything like this before, and it required kind of a big step out of my comfort zone to start recording myself cooking food and posting it on the internet. And you all have been nothing but supportive of that and showered me in positivity, and that makes me so happy. You guys have bared with me for the first three videos where I've been a little awkward on camera, the filming's been a little shaky, the editing sucks, you know, you guys have stuck with it, you've been super supportive, and, and I can't express enough how thankful I am for that and how happy it makes me. I truly love cooking, and I love to be able to share things like this with you all, and, and it just makes my day. When Wednesdays roll around, that's when I film these, I wake up and I'm like, this is the day I film and I'm super excited and that's because of you all. So maybe I'm being dramatic. This is only episode four. I don't know, but I thought it was important to know that you guys are appreciated. So thank you for watching. As always, share this with your friends to help spread the joy of cooking to everyone. Send me suggestions on what I should make next and we will see you next week. Take care. <laughs>